What's up, Buck Douglas in the garage. This is the front of my 2001 WJ. Today, we're going to be adding in this guy right here. This is going to be a uh, transmission cooler. I want this for towing, for sitting in traffic uh, on the Jersey Turnpike in the summer. So here's the plan. I watched Project Dan's video. He did a great video on a trans cooler install. I took his advice and I made sure I got a cooler with a frame for mounting. Uh, this is a Hayden one. Uh, they're all about the same. I wanted one that was about the same size as the factory power steering cooler. The reason is this. I'm thinking about putting it right here bolting it to the mount for the power steering cooler. And then in another video, we're going to be installing two rescue fans, one in front of this trans cooler, one in front of this power steering cooler, uh, so that if something goes wrong with my hydraulic fan, God forbid, or I'm just sitting in traffic, uh, or for whatever reason I need extra cooling, I can flip these on and uh, hopefully uh, moderate my temperature much better than that. But this will be a separate video. Today, we're gonna be installing this. Ready now here's the Hayden kit I got. Comes with everything you're gonna need. A generous length of braided tubing for plumbing this thing up. It comes with all the stuff to uh, attach your tubes. And then here's the key, this big bag of hardware and mounting um, options. So what we're gonna do is play around with it over there on the Jeep, figure out how best to fit it in, how best to tap it. I think, I think we'll probably drill right through that mount, use two of these, done and done. And I'm thinking about using bolts like this coming from the back. This is actually a piece of like C channel, so the head of this bolt will sit perfect and it will not interfere with my uh, condenser here. So I think that's the direction I want to go. It'd be real easy to just use self tappers going this way, but I don't want something pointy sticking out the back. Uh, God forbid, you know, messes up my condenser here. So we're going to drill the holes for these and it should be a real simple uh, mount up. I'm real happy with the way this install went. The next step is getting it actually hooked up. We're gonna do it in series. I don't believe it's ever a good idea to fully cut out the uh, factory transmission cooler. So we're gonna keep the inlet into the radiator here. We're gonna take the upper um, transmission cooler line off. We're gonna splice it over into this and then back out to the transmission and that'll be it. We're gonna do it real simple like. All right, I went down bottom and I disconnected the soft line from this hard line. This is the upper transmission cooler line. Without trying to jimmy jam a radiator all over the place, we're going to try to disconnect that so that we can pull it out and modify it. Uh, an interesting thing here, I think Jeep kind of messed up when they designed this. They put the power steering cooler right here, even though the power steering pump is on the other side of the motor, which means now I have to put the trans cooler on the opposite line. The result is we're just gonna have a lot of lines running all over the place, but uh, I don't know, maybe they knew what they were doing. There we go, she's gonna pop right off for us. Hopefully not spilling too much ATF as that is my least favorite smell on the entire planet. And we're gonna work this guy up and out. Now we're gonna do what Project Dan did. He cut it, flared it, and then uh, just had it a little piece sticking up like this to attach the hose to. I think that's a beautifully elegant way to do it and that is exactly what we're gonna do. All right, so here's the idea. This thing will be attached like this. I think I've got a, a tube bender. I'm gonna try to bend it so it comes right out right there like that. Let's see if we can do that. All right, we got this little tube bender here. They're super inaccurate, but I mean, they kind of get the job done. At least they don't collapse the um, the tube, you know, if I just try to, t to bend it by hand. Let's see what we can do here. Oh boy, I have to get this in the vise. There it is. Perfect. Yep, a little bit more. Oh yeah. 
that'll do. Look at that. Freaking perfect, right? Custom parts right there. Let's see how this fits. Alrighty, so it's gonna come around like that. I mean, it's a little bit choochier than I really need, but screw it. Let's, uh, let's get the end of that flared so it'll take the hose nicely. So we got our piece of pipe flared. Something happened with the camera there. Uh, so I missed the actual footage, but this is just a brake line uh, flarer. Um, we flared the end so that the hose doesn't want to slip right off. We put a hose clamp right behind that and we can be sure that I'm not going to be spraying trans fluid all the way down the road. I've been fooled before. Alright, if you're going to be trying this at home, I highly recommend you blow this thing out with an air compressor after uh, having it on a grinder and all that extra stuff. Let's see though. Fits perfect just how I wanted it to. I'm quickly realizing that I do not have enough of this hose that they gave me to complete this job. but. It's okay, we're gonna get as far as we can. And then uh, maybe we'll run to the store, get some more or something. So this is gonna have to go through here. Where'd it go? Oh, back behind the condenser. Good tip for getting these lines on, just put a little ATF on them. Help some slide. But if you get it on your hands, it makes it harder to hold. <laughs> so there's definitely a trade off there. Trying to avoid taking this off so I don't have to get it lined up later, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be possible. Need some extra room to really get back there. Oh, that's perfect. It's like it's snug, but it doesn't crimp the hose at all. I am super happy with that. Let's just leave that like that for right now since we don't know where we're gonna end up. Uh-huh, we can measure and cut this, which I think, get my sharpie. Uh, about there, should do it. Take some of this trusty uh, lube here, put it on there. All right. Another hose clamp. Oh yeah, it's going nowhere. So there you go, I call that a proper fix there. Perfectly bent, no crimps in the system gonna have a nice free flow and I'll just work on the bottom. Alrighty friends, we did pretty much the same thing for the bottom. My issue was I didn't have enough tube left all in one piece. I had a piece from a previous project and I had the remainder of the piece that came with the kit. So I used the original piece of tubing, I flanged it out and I used it to connect the two and since this piece of tubing was already at a right angle, it kind of cleaned it up for getting back under there. Uh, this is connected to another piece of tube, obviously, which goes to the original return line, thus completing the system. So this part of the install is pretty much done. Alrighty, I topped off the uh, ATF. I'm kind of guessing how much I need to put in there. I obviously lost some when I cut the old lines. Plus we need to fill this whole new system. There's quite a bit of tubing. So I put about a half a cord in. We're gonna go take this thing for a ride, try to get the trans up to temperature, come back, make sure it doesn't leak, make sure our levels are good. And if all that is good, uh, then I'm gonna put everything back together. I don't wanna put everything on now and then have to get at this to fix the leak. So I'm gonna go try to drive around the neighborhood with no front on the Jeep, no lights or anything and hope that, uh, hope I don't get yelled at by anybody. <laughs> Alrighty friends, I drove around the block. I thankfully didn't get pulled over for having no friggin' headlights or anything in it. But also, more importantly, no leaks. I checked all of the fittings. We got the ten, uh, trans all the way up to temperature. Um, another thing, I was really giving it a good workout and it doesn't seem like this is affecting the cooling of the radiator too much. Still though, still to come, I've got two of these fans, these 10 inch pusher fans. Um, I've got them all mocked up. One's going right here over this one. 
The other one's going over here. There's gonna be another video on that coming. Uh, I'm not gonna do that in this video, but stay tuned for that. If you have any questions on this setup here, by all means, leave me a link down there in the squawk boxes. I will include the materials I used. This one is perfect, in my opinion. Um, just the right size, got great mounting points. The kit is very complete, and it was super affordable, super affordable. So I'll leave a link to that. Uh, like I said, comment down in the squawk boxes. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.